So as I was saying, we've gotten the pivot point for the uh, weekly and daily time frame. So we wait for the market to close uh, below. You can see the market closed below. I need to, okay. The market closed below the four hour candlestick closed below at this point. So you take your trade from this point. Now, where do you set your stop loss? That's another thing um, you need to know. Where are you supposed or are you expected to set your stop loss? It is very important you set your stop loss in every trade that you execute. Don't make the mistake of not setting your stop loss. The first thing you should do when you execute a trade is to set your stop loss. That's the first thing. You should be able to define the risk before you execute any trade. You should, be able, you should define the risk before you execute any trade. If you can't define the risk, then you don't have a good setup. You don't have a trade. You shouldn't execute that trade. So now that we have gotten okay, our entry point, we know this is our entry point when the market's... Now, here is our exit point. Now, we have, if you look at this um, chart here, the, what we have here, we have a, a support or a resistance level at this point. There was a resistance level at this point, okay, that was broken. And when a resistance level is broken, it becomes a support okay so we had a resistant level here and it became a support so you can use this point okay or you can go to lower time frame let's go to one hour time frame and let's see what we have there look for the nearest support or resistant level okay there was a, a, a little not too strong support we had a support at this point so the market broke this support level it became a resistant level. It became a resistant level. So if you want to, after executing this trade, the best place to set your stop loss is at this level or some pips above this level. You can set it 10 pips above this level. Okay, because If you set it at this level, this obvious level, now most of you must have heard about brokers, you know, hunting for traders on stops, you know, something like that. I don't know how true is that, but it happens in the market. Sometimes you set your stop loss, the market gets to that point, and you know, from that point, they kick you out of the market, okay, and the market will not continue in that trend, okay in that uh, trend that you have predicted, okay? So some people say it's stop on, it's possible. I don't know how true that is, but it happens in the market. And I think the reason it happens is that, you know, these levels are obvious level. And these brokers, I don't know, brokers or market makers, they see, I believe brokers, they see um, at the back end, Every trade executed by retail traders, they see where our stop loss is, they see where our tick profit is, okay? And if they see that a lot of traders are setting their stop loss at that same level, and this obvious level, this um, support stone resistance is a level where most traders will set their stop loss. So if they see that most traders are setting their stop loss at that level, they could, you know, Hunt for it, okay? So that is why I suggest that you always set your stop loss above the resistance level if you are selling, okay? Or below the support level, maybe 10 pips. Yeah, sometimes they will still go there and eat it, but it's safer to set it at that point than to set it at obvious level where they know most traders will set their stop loss. Okay, so you don't set your stop loss at obvious levels where brokers can just hunt for it and kick you out of the market and you want to revenge. And the more you try to revenge, the more you lose 
money. Okay, so best place to set your stop loss is you locate a resistance level if you are selling and a support level if you are buying. So here is a support sound resistance. So your stop loss should be at this point or 10 pips above this level. Never have done their job. Okay, so. Oh. Okay. So you set your stop loss 10 pips above this level. This retracement is not, a lot of people are concerned about retracement. I tell them retracement is not, um, is not, should not be your, this is the setup. Once you see your setup, place your trade. Your concern should be where would I set my stop loss? Okay, where would I set my stop loss? That should be your concern. Okay, leave this retracement. This move that you're seeing that happens here, yeah, this, this bullish move is as a result of what is happening on lower time frame. Four hour, one hour, and 15 minutes time frame. That's what you're seeing here. Yeah. Okay, that's what, you, that's what we have here. Yeah. Okay, but if you're trading with the weekly, daily, and four hour time frame, this should be your focus. Where is your entry point and where is your exit point? Your exit point should be at the nearest resistance level or 10 pips above that level. So if you were to take this trade, your entry at this level, your stop loss at this level, this is like 30 pips. Okay, let's say you even set it 10 pips above this level, that's like 40 pip risk. And if you're taking a risk of 40 pips, you should expect a minimum of 60 pips reward on that trade. You should expect a minimum of 60 pips reward on that trade. Let's see what happened. Yeah. So the market went down with just, um, um, this is like 57, 57 pips. If you consider spread on this trade, maybe well, that's like 53 pips. And your target is 60 pips, minimum is 60 pips. Now, you also need to ensure that the trade that has gone in your direction. Now, you need to master or learn, understand trailing stop and how to use it effectively okay you need to know how understand trailing stop and how to use it effectively now what is trailing stop now when you set your trailing stop when a trailing stop is set okay if the market goes in your direction if the market is in your direction let's say you place a trade and the market are giving you 40 pips you are in profit of say 40 to 50 pips. The market is going in your direction. Okay, and your stop loss, your risk is 40 pips. Now you have covered your risk. The market has given you a reward, okay, that's equal to your risk. So the best thing to do for you, the best thing to do is to adjust your stop loss. Adjust your stop loss. That is what trailing stop is. You adjust your stop loss. Now you can automate the process or you do it manually now for you to automate so use to automate the process you need a vps that's a virtual private server to automate or you ensure that your laptop and your internet connection is on 24 hours for you to automate trailing stop okay i use the manual um approach okay i trail my stop as the market keeps moving in my direction i keep adjusting my stop now, for example, this trade, you were risking 40 pips and the market had given you 50 something pips profit. Okay, so by at this time, you should at worst have adjusted your stop loss to your entry level. That is the price you entered the market. You should have adjusted your stop to that level. So in this trade, you should be able to pick like at least 10 pips profits. Don't allow a trade as sound profit that has given you so much profit to turn negative or to, to turn to a loss. Ensure that you always close profit. 
If the market has given you a reward that equals your risk, ensure that you close that trade in profit or small loss. Okay, it is very um, painful or discouraging when a market has gone in your direction, you've made 50 pip, it has given you a reward that equals the risk you, the initial risk you took. Now you wait for that market to retrace. Okay, now the market retraced. The market didn't even close at your entry level. It still went down. You left the trade for the trade to go and eat your stop loss. So a trade that has given you 50 pip now returns back and eats your stop loss. You now close that trade at negative 40 pips. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let that happen to you. Always trail your stop. As the market keeps going in your direction, you keep adjusting your stop loss till it gets to your entry level. And from your entry level, you move it up, okay? Now, you don't just adjust your stop loss. Some people just ah, now nah, I mean, them, I've made 10 pips. I've made 20 pips. They will just adjust their stop loss to entry level. If you keep doing that, you will keep losing money. You don't just adjust your stop loss because the market has given you some pips. The pip is not equal, does not equal the initial risk you, you took. For you to trade your stop, you need to ensure that the risk, the reward, the profit that you have made from that market equals the risk before you adjust your, that's when you, you, you can adjust your, your, your stop loss to maybe your entry level or some pips below your entry level. So going back to the weekly charts, going back to the weekly charts, we have defined that from this point, okay, the market is what? Bearish. The market is bearish. Now, if you get the pivot of the week before the last week candlestick, before this candlestick, if you get the pivot of this candlestick, the market was trading below the pivot of this candlestick. That will give you a confirmation that the market is still bearish. Okay, that will give you a confirmation that the market is still bearish. Now, you are not expected to, to do analysis on this new candlestick because your bias, the, your analysis, the analysis you did here, is still very valid. So you don't have to be doing analysis every week. Okay? You don't have to be doing analysis every week. The analysis you did here is still valid at this point. The only thing you can just do is just to confirm, okay, last week or on this candlestick, let me, you already knew that the, 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 the bias or the sentiment for the market, is, the, the market is still bearish. You already knew that. Okay, so the only thing you can just do is, okay, Wait and okay on this candlestick you can get the pivot. Okay, you confirm that the market is still trading below the pivot of this candlestick. That's to tell you that the market is still bearish. Now, in a bearish market, you will still have, for example, if you are using weekly time frame or the monthly time frame for your analysis as long term analysis, even though the market is bearish on the longer time frame, you will still have some bullish move on the lower time frame. Okay, and you can catch those move also if you know how to analyze using the same strategy on the lower time frame, you can catch those moves. But I always tell you know, traders that the market will always follow the long-term trend. So your focus should be on the long-term trend. If what you have on the monthly time frame and weekly time frame is a bearish trend, even though you have bullish uh, formation on lower time frame, the market will still follow the long term trend. So if you're executing trade on the lower time frame, you need to ensure that you, 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 you're very careful and you use very tight stop loss, okay? So you always follow the long term trend because the big players, they trade using the longer time frame. Okay, and you want to be in the market when you want to be doing what the big time traders, the big players are doing in the market. You don't want to be trading against um, them. Okay, you want to do what they are doing in the market. You want to follow the trend that they are following. You don't want to trade against them. It is very, very important. So even though you want to follow the, the retracement, 
or pullbacks on lower time frame, you have to be very careful. Always have the longer term trend in focus. Okay, so since you've done your analysis here, the market is still bearish. We got the pivot of this candlestick for this week. The market is still trading below the, the, the pivot of this candlestick. So the market, Euro USD, is still bearish. Just by looking at the charts, you should know that the market is still bearish. There is no bullish candlestick formation. If you go down to daily, you see what we have on a daily, it's still a strong um, bearish formation. We don't have bulls in the market now for you to now decide that you want to buy this pair. It is still a clear bearish formation. Now on a daily, you can see that we had a resistance level here. No, sorry, a support level. This is a support level on a daily. And support levels on daily time frame and, um, and weekly time frame, they are strong levels. They are strong levels you wash out for. They are strong levels. So this candlestick just broke a strong support level, which has become a resistant level. That's to tell you that the market is still what? Bearish not just by using the pivot analysis, but also looking at the support level. Looking at the support level. The market has broken this support level. That's to say that the market is still bearish. Now we look at the monthly, it is bearish. We look at the weekly, it is bearish. We look at daily, it is bearish. We go down to four hour. We look at the time frame here. You can see we don't have a bullish candlestick. Okay, let's assume we won't have a bullish candlestick after this um, what was it called? After this bearish candlestick, we can assume that we have little buyers in the market. We can assume that we have little buyers in the market. But at the moment, we don't have buyers. The, 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 the bears are still in control. I hope I'm recording this session. Okay. The bears are still in control. There is no bullish candlestick. You can't tell me you want to buy um, Euro USD. What, what, what are you seeing on your charts? You trade what you see on your chart, okay? Don't trade what your mind tells you. It is what you're seeing on your chart that you should trade. This is a bearish formation. And even we had a, a bullish candlestick after this candlestick, we might consider. But knowing that the longer term trend is bearish, I might decide not to execute a buy trade. Wait for a good sell setup before I would enter the market as for a sell, okay? So looking at the charts now, Please, if you can't hear me, I want you to send me a message. If I don't get a um, message from you, I just assume that you, everything is going on smoothly. Okay, so that is that for, you go down to one hour, everything is still bearish. Okay, everything still looks bearish. Okay, so Euro USD, using the weekly, monthly, all the time frames, you can see that it is still bearish. Okay, but like I said, on the longer time frame, where you have a bearish um, trend, on lower time frame, you still expect some pullback. Okay, so I expect for Euro USD this week, my bias for this week, throughout this week, is sell, sell, and sell. That's my now. When should I enter this market now? When the market opens, we have, uh, we we have on a four-hour year. Let's say we have now this zigzag indicator. I also need to let you know how to how you can use this zigzag indicator for your analysis. Now, when you see a zigzag indicator, this zigzag indicator below a candlestick like this, it tells you it is likely we'll be having uh, a pullback, a reversal. That's what it does not show you a support level. Okay, it just tells you it's likely that we have some pullback or there will be a retracement or reversal, kind of. Okay, so we have this zigzag at this point. Now it tells you that you should expect this is four hour time frame. You, you will expect some maybe bullish move, okay, before the market would continue in its um, uh, downward uh, trend or bearish move. Okay, so we might expect some bullish move when the market opens today and maybe on Monday. We might expect, we might see some bullish movements before the bearish uh, trend would continue. Okay, so if we have a bullish 
candlestick from the end, you expect a, a what's it called, a bullish move. But since we still have a bearish candlestick, now if I want to sell, if I want to sell this pair, I would have to wait for the market to close below this level before I would take a sell trade. I'll wait for the market to break this um, zigzag indicator before I would take a sell trade. Okay, that is how to use this zigzag indicator. It's just to tell you that it's likely we'll be having a pullback. Okay, it doesn't define a support or resistance level. Okay, so now since I have it here, or since we have it here, I'll wait for the market to break this level before I will take a sell trade. Before I will take a sell trade. Another thing I will need to confirm, another thing I will need to confirm is if at this point, if at this level on this candlestick, the high of this candlestick, if I move down to 15 minutes time frame and I see a zigzag indicator at this point, okay, if I see a zigzag indicator on 15 minutes time frame at this level, okay, when the market breaks this level, then I would sell. Now, I want to go down to 15 minutes time frame to confirm if there is a zigzag at that level. Let's go down to 15 minutes and see what we have there. So, there is no zigzag at this level. There is no zigzag at this level. You can see no zigzag at this level. Okay, so I'm expecting that this market will go up. We should expect a zigzag above a 15 minutes time frame. Okay, we expect a zigzag above this market to go up a little. Okay, we expect a, a zigzag at some point. Then we wait for that zigzag, that market to break this, uh, what was it called? This level where we have our zigzag before we take a sell trade. So we expect a hop, um, a pullback or a retracement to the upside, okay? Locate when a zigzag forms on a candlestick, then you cannot consider selling. But before you sell, you wait for the market to trade below this level where you have your zigzag before you sell the, the before you execute the trade, okay? Now, if you are executing the trade, if, for venture, the market does not give you a zigzag on 15 minutes and you want to sell this pair if the market trades below this level, okay? What would you do? Where would you set your stop loss? Your stop loss should be, would be at this level. This is where you should be looking at setting your stop loss, where you have the zigzag, okay? So when you have a newly formed zigzag, and the market now breaks this level, you cannot adjust your stop loss to that new high or set some pips above that level, okay? So, but if you want to take the trade when the market, if it happens that the market does not give you a zigzag formation, the market might open and probably close below this level, okay? The market might not go up and probably it will close below this level. If you close below this level and you want to take the trade, then you should consider setting your stop loss at this level. So when we have a formation where there's a zigzag above a candlestick on 15 minutes and it closes and it's now closes below this level, you cannot adjust your stop loss from that level to the new level. Okay, you can set it like 10 pips above that level. Now, let me repeat what I've said. Now, you can start with the weekly time frame like I do. Okay, like I do, you can start with the weekly time frame for your analysis. You can also decide to use the daily time frame. Now, if you're working with the daily time frame, you're working with three time frames, which is daily, four hour, and one hour time frame. Okay, and if you're working with the daily four hour and one hour time frame, it means that after you've done your analysis for the day and you've done your analysis for four hour and one hour is your entry, okay, you know where you have to enter the market, you would have to be watching your chart every one, one hour, every one, one hour to see if one hour candlestick has closed below your entry uh, price or entry points. You have to be looking at the chart every one, one hour. So you need to be sure that you'll be available. Okay, you have all the time to always look at your chart every one, one hour. If you don't have that time, you cannot be looking at your phone every, on your phone, at your phone. If you don't have access to your phone every one, one hour, then that time frame will not work for you. That time frame will not work for you. 
So you can consider the weekly, um, daily, and four hour. No matter how busy you are, you should be able to access your phone every four, four hour. Okay, what you're interested in is to see if the market has closed below uh, your entry point so that you can execute the trade. Once you execute the trade, you don't have to be watching the charts. Okay, but before you enter the market, before you execute your trade, you need to be checking your, your chart to know when the market is trading below your entry level so that you can execute the trade. Okay, so you can also decide to work, for example, now this um, weekly analysis we just did, let's take it to daily. Let's assume we are working with the daily time frame, four hour and one hour time frame, so that you would see that with the daily four hour time frame, you would have entered this market earlier than someone who is trading using the weekly, daily, and four hour time frame. So I uh, would we'll delete all these lines so that we'll just focus on the daily now. I want to move to the daily four hour and one hour time frame. So you can use both, um, both um, time frames. You can decide to use um, the weekly. It is even very important that you should be able to do, apply the analysis on weekly, four, daily, and four hour. Also apply the analysis on daily, four hour, and one hour because it is very important that you always catch in. You enter the trend at its early stage so that your risk will be, will be, will be, will be minimized. Okay, you need to use those two um, sets of time frames. Okay, do your analysis when the market closes on Friday. You can do your analysis for the weekly. You also do your analysis for the daily so that you can enter with one hour time frame using the daily four hour hour and one hour time frame. You enter early so that your risk is reduced. Because when you are using the weekly, um, daily, and four hour, your, your risk is a, a, a bit high. Okay, so let's go, let me delete all these lines and let's use the um, daily and um, four hour. Let's go down to daily and four hour. Okay, let's use daily and four hour now. This is what we have on a daily time frame. See, now we have a bullish candlestick here. I'll talk more about the zigzag indicator later. So let's, we have, I have 10 minutes, okay. Zoom will, will cut me off in the next 10 minutes. Okay, so um, I have this bullish candlestick here. This is a strong bullish candlestick. Okay, so to get the pivot of this candlestick, what do I do? I'll get the high low close of this candlestick. The high low close of this candlestick to get the pivot. We might, there might be need for us to have another class tomorrow. Okay. Because what we are looking at here now is just pivots, okay? We still need to look at um, on zigzag indicator and also how to define uh, resistance and support. I'm just touching zigzag and um, and um, support and resistance here, but we we'll still have to focus on resistance and so about how to define them and also how to use this um, zigzag indicator effectively. So now for pivots, okay, we have this then. Um, The close is one point one two two three. So that is the pivot for that daily candlestick. That is the people for that daily candlestick. So we'll go down to four hour. Remember, on four hour, we will be using the candlestick where this as uh, pivot, our uh, daily pivot is lying on. This pivot line must be lying on the candlestick we will be used on on four hour time frame, just as we did on the weekly, daily, and four hour. So we go down to four hour, and we also get um, the pivot. You can see this is um, the vertical line. This is our horizontal line and it's lying on this 
candlestick. So we get the pivot of this candlestick. Let's get the pivot of this candlestick. Those of you that are new to trading, I believe you're following to see how I'm inputting these parameters, how I'm editing this horizontal line, where I'm getting the, the tools from, okay? So, you always change the color so that you can be able to identify which one is the daily time frame, which one is uh, weekly pivot, which one is four hour pivot. So you see what we have here. See, we have the four hour pivot at this level. We also have the daily at this level. So we wait for one hour candlestick to close below. Let's go to one hour candlestick to know, to see where it's closed below. So you can see the market opened below, uh, what's it called? Below the pivot level. That's to tell you that the market is what? Bearish. Okay, so you can decide to take your trade at the open of this, uh, candlestick you can decide to place your cell okay cell trade you can decide to close it to place your cell um, trade from this this is the open you can decide to sell your stop loss should be above this level or at this level this is a resistant level okay or you can go down to let's go down to uh, 15 minutes and locate um, a, a point where we have zigzag on 15 minutes that we can use as our stop level let's go down to 15 minutes see if we have zigzag at some point okay so let's go down to 15 minutes so you can see at this point this is where we have zigzag so this is the best point to set your stop loss if you're taking the trade from this point Okay, this is a point. So this is 20, 29 pips. Okay, you are setting your stop loss, it's 29 pips, or let's say 30 pips. When you consider spread, that's like 30 pips. And the least you should go for is 50 pips. The least you should go for is 50 pips. Let's go down to one hour and see, okay? So you can see that if you had used daily uh, four hour and one hour time frame, you would have entered earlier. Okay, you have you would have joined this trend earlier than the trader who is using the weekly for the weekly, daily, and four hour time frame. So don't just focus on one of the sets of this time frame. You should work with the weekly, daily, and four hour. So have that in, in view. Also, you move down to daily, four hour and one hour time frame so that you can catch the trend at its early stage. So if you have took this trade, for example, you definitely would have made good profit. So when the trader who is using the uh, weekly, daily and four hour is just entering the market, since you also have the view, you have an idea, you know what is happening on that time frame, you will still what, join the trend. The person, the trader who is using the weekly, daily and four hour is just entering the market you have entered the market. Probably you would have even the market would have even um, rewarded you with your initial risk with the initial risk you took. Probably you would have even adjusted your stop to your entry level or a little bit above your entry level. So you should work with both sets of time frames. That is the day, the weekly, daily, and four hour. You should also work with the daily, weekly, daily, four hour. And one hour time frame. Now, before I move to the next um, pair, before I move to the next pair, I want to probably you have questions. Okay, I want to, if you have any question, I want you to unmute yourself. I want you to unmute yourself. You should have questions. I expect questions from you. 
you can yeah ask the question okay you're welcome that's me uh, mr gaga yeah i have a question sir. okay okay yeah i wanted to ask like what's the minimum amount um a trader can use for a longer time frame like this daily and weekly you're talking about uh if you're working with the um if you work with the um let's say weekly daily and four hour time frame the maximum risk like i said you should take on each trade on every trade should not exceed 50 pips okay and you're also advised not to risk more than two to three percent of your capital or your your balance okay so let's say you have um two hundred dollars two hundred dollars in your account you can still trade with uh weekly daily and um, four hour time frame since your risk is 50 pips so if you have two hundred dollars that means on every trade if you're risking two percent two percent of two hundred dollars is um I think that's four dollar so that might not work that's four dollar because you need to risk at least minimum of five dollar trading with 0 0.01 lot size if you're trading if your risk is 50 pips that means 0 0.01 times 50 pips will give you five dollar so if you have 200 dollar it might not work okay that means you unless you're risking three percent of your investment that is three percent of your 200 dollar that will be six dollar on every trade it, it can still work okay three percent is not too high on each trade so you should trade between two to three percent so if you have say two hundred dollars on your account then you can still use the weekly daily and um four hour time frame okay your risk should not exceed 50 pips it should be between 30 and 50 pips that's what you always get okay as risk okay so with two hundred dollars three percent which is six dollar on every trade it's, it's still a good one okay uh thank you sir did you, did you understand my my story yes sir yeah okay okay any other question i have less than one minute to go up and reconnect it's the same id so you don't need to um bother it's the same id any other question mr teofilo